Hey guys, this is The Hidden Matrix and welcome back to another video on the channel and in today's video we're going to be drawing Super Shadow the Hedgehog so there isn't that many tutorials on YouTube I've noticed for Super Shadow and just Super Farms in general for Sonic the Hedgehog characters so I thought that you know I'd bring out my own tutorial on how to draw Super Shadow so I'm gonna try my best to deliver to you guys the best drawing tutorial on Super Shadow and it'll be basically a step-by-step -step tutorial and with a few in-depth tips and a, a guide to show you guys how to do everything so obviously if you're drawing on paper you want to make sure you got a pencil a rubber and ruler in case you ever have any measurements that you need to do then that's what a ruler is great for, of course. And if you're drawing on a digital tablets, like I'm doing right now with the tutorial, you can still follow along if you're doing it on paper. That's perfectly fine, and there's nothing to worry about if you're doing it on paper, but if you're doing it on digital tablet, I've got my pencil at 10 brush size, and I'm using one of the uh, stores, and it's Clip Studio's official pencil that's uh, free to buy on the store so you don't need to pay anything for that pencil tool if you want to use exactly what I'm using just have a quick moment to pause and have a look at the color palette that I'm using as well so that you can follow, follow along as easy as possible and this is Clip Studio Paint that I'm using and there's a free trial if you want to try it before you actually buy the version that I'm using the software but there's plenty of digital tablet drawing software out there so if you're using a different program to me then that's perfectly fine but enough said let's jump straight into the video so what you want to do is of course start off with the head and the way I like to do things when drawing is I like to start off with simple shapes I like to construct my drawing before I go straight into drawing any detail and be careful not to hit my mic <laughs> while drawing but simply you just want to start off with a simple circle it's all rough now so it's just a sketch to uh, know where everything is going so inside this circle you'll have like the mouth muzzle area where like the nose is and where the white part of the eye and his eyebrows and of course his eye pupils so that's where everything will be and outside of it You'll have your ears and your spikes. So now that that's done, what we'll do is we'll now put the axis on axis of like where the head is directing, so like the way it's facing. So um, he's sort of slanting and slightly, he's like looking forward, but he's slightly tilted. So that's what we want to try and show here. So what I'll do is now go a line across just to show where everything will look the head in the direction that it's going and of course the line across gives you an easier idea for where like the um, top of the muzzle is and where the um, bottom of the pupils will go for uh, shadows eyes so now that we've got that what we want to now make sure when we're drawing the body since I'll be drawing like a bean shape like some kind of oval shape that's kind of sort of a bit bent since he's sort of leaning backwards with his uh, back with his spine so um, you want to make sure that you've got kind of a bend when drawing this and it might need a little bit of <laughs> adjusting but what we do is just follow along what I'm doing and if I make any adjustments you can do that as well because if you're ever drawing things and you learn how to draw tutorials I wouldn't recommend using a pen to draw things is you're always gonna encounter uh, mistakes really even drawing with pens that you need to be uh, knowing what you're drawing basically you need to have drawn it plenty of times to uh, have <laughs> an easier time with drawing with pens so you're not finishing a drawing with <laughs> many errors since that's why I like to uh, use drawing tablets and drawing software so I can avoid <laughs> Um, drawings with errors and I'm not trying to be a perfectionist that's not what you want to be uh, when drawing but you want to try and at least uh, avoid errors so that's why I prefer um, and that's why I moved on to draw digital over paper even though I feel like I'm better at paper sometimes but uh, I do uh, prefer to 
do digital art if, if that's um, similar for you guys as well then I'd always recommend it doing digital art as digital art doesn't give you an advantage over drawing on papers your skills are still your skills it's not like you're going to be better than everyone else because you have a different way of drawing it's not that it's about the amount of time you put into drawing that's how you get better so if you want to get better you've always got to put time and effort into drawing and sometimes you've got to draw the same picture over and over before you can uh, draw it perfectly almost so that's basically always always is practice makes per perfect but I feel like I'm rambling on a lot so I don't want to do that too much in this video so um, now that you've done this uh, beanie shape that we've got for shadow here what we'll do is to slightly bend this line inwards since it goes so it's facing down since it will connect to the leg so what we'll do is go down and you see that it's like that's the side of the leg but I like to draw the middle line for legs so when going down we'll go down to about there that'll be okay for now and what we'll do is just go like that and then we we'll basically do the same on the other side the same amount of space in between the gaps but for the middle points it should be the same each side we kind of get an idea of how everything should go and then what we'll do is have a line across that will represent the uh, right leg as that is going at an uh, angle like a 45 degree angle almost so yeah I'll just make sure that I get the right line as well for this side of the leg so it's kind of going a little bit inwards you don't want it going outwards really you want to try and uh, eventually grad gradually get the line to stay equal all the way through from where it was at the body to the, the bottom of the leg now let's uh, go with the right leg and sorry if I'm going too slow but I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I'm making it as easy as possible for you guys to understand and trying to make it as easy to explain for you guys. As <laughs> Explaining how to draw things isn't always the most simplest thing since everyone has a different style so it can be a little bit difficult to get your point across but I'll, I'll try my best to help you guys. Always you can put uh, a comment down in the comment section below if you need any help with anything and I'll I'll feel free to uh, I'll definitely reply and help you out with everything and yeah if you ever need any help on anything any tips then just ask me and yeah I'll, I'll do my best to uh, show you <laughs> how to improve or you know give you a few tips that may actually improve your art massively right so we've got basically an idea of how Shadow is kind of looking in this pose. He's, the way he's standing is kind of showing that he's got a lot of power because he's in his super form and yeah he's, he's got one hand is got clenched into a fist and the other one is just sort of down to his side where it looks like he's relaxed but he's so, sort of got like a serious pose going on here. Also quickly um, I just decided to sort of angle his leg a little bit more inwards as the gap between uh, the two legs isn't uh, that big really so uh, I felt like mine was a little bit too big so I, I kind of just wanted to change that slightly so that's okay and we'll slide that out and then we'll just reconnect things and then once we've done that what we'll move on to next is the arms so basically what I like to do for shoulders is kind of draw a circle for kind of where the shoulder um, is going to start and you know the shoulder bone basically so you know if you look at the other shoulder it'd probably be going around around there and since it's that kind of an angle is going down a bit so and then you just draw the, like the arm kind of thing so trying trying to think about like the archer and the skeleton in the body of like the the, the character you're drawing or the creature or whatever you're drawing as it'll make things a lot easier so now we go down like this for the arm so just doing kind of like a really stretched out long uh, S shape, it's almost like a snake, the way it sort of coils and everything, <laughs> the way it bends. Right, so now that we've got that, what we'll do is we'll sort of cut off where the end of the hand is and then doing similar things to what we did with the leg, we'll draw outside that middle line and then the same on this side and it'll cut into the body that we did and there you go that's the arm done I'll just get rid of all the things I'm doing 
because you can clean up um, as you go if you want, uh, as that might make it a little bit easier for you guys to draw in things and you don't really want to be drawing over things too much as you'll end up losing the line you actually want to finish with. There we go, I'm happy with that there, that's all sorted and what I'll do now is I will quickly just change this line so now that we're basically expanding on the line we had before uh, basically you know the beanie shape the oval shape that we had for the construction of the body basically improving on that now and just developing it there's now shadow you can see is kind of leaning and that's how it is for his body there and then what I like to do for uh, shadows there is just go down with sort of like a V shape at the bottom and then what we'll do is we'll just go the line up like that and then we'll go across and then a little bit upwards and you, you kind of creating like an arrow shape and we can just rub out everything inside of it for now and then I'll draw the middle point and I'll develop those a little bit later on but that's kind of like a placeholder kind of shape that we've got going on there for shadow so now that we've done that what I'll do now is draw in the, the feet. So what I'm going to do is quickly just go down, let's say it will finish around there and then what we'll do is we'll sort of curve around this. This will be kind of a little bit placeholder right now as I just want to get um, the shape of where everything is for the, uh, the, the shoe right now and then I'll go back to improving it once we've got everything but it's kind of curving around this is kind of the, the, the ankle area of the shoe. You've got his black and red part, similar to uh, where his uh, wrist glove parts have as well. You know, he has red and black on his wrist as well. So it's a cool design. Who's your favorite Sonic character? I'd like to know as well, since my favorite is also uh, Shadow the Hedgehog, actually. So, <laughs> what convenience. <laughs> I'm actually drawing him. Or what coincidence. <laughs> right, so. Yeah, so then once we've done that, um, what we're going to do is draw the ring around Shadow, so like power ring that controls his power and keeps him from going crazy. You don't want to become the ultimate life form <laughs> and uh, destroy the world, do you? No, you want to keep control of your power, so, so you don't, you don't want to be feared by the humans. <laughs> that, isn't, that is not his purpose. If you, as he learns, if you ever play Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> right, so now that's a ring. So once we've got that, now we can simply do basic shapes for the shoes. So what I like to do when drawing character shoes is kind of make it as basic as possible, making kind of like a, almost a triangle shape almost, I guess. Uh, if you go like this, cross, and then it's, it's like a really uh, <laughs> crazy looking triangle. So if you ba basically connect that up there, you get an idea of how uh, the shoe would look. That we're going to get rid of those two lines there as so we don't want that. So that's how you basically go about drawing uh, a construction for a shoe and we'll improve that later on. But now we'll go and now start on this next one. I did draw the line a little bit too big so it didn't matter if we cut in since they are kind of actually quite level. Uh, the two legs they kind of end at similar places. So now that we've got that idea we'll go and draw basically the red bit which is in front this time it's not an angle it's uh, just straight ahead and it will cut into the left one a little bit keep that in mind so going around doing the uh, little curve for the uh, power ring and then we'll do the same on the other side but this time to go out a little bit more since there's a little bit black showing as well since you don't want to have the black <laughs> bit there and then nothing underneath it so we make sure it goes out a little bit more so basically like that and you get the idea of how things are here and then what we'll do is add in now like the shoe shape so it's kind of like a triangle shape almost again so what we'll do is go a straight line down and then we'll go a line outwards like that and go a little bit more of it to that line there so it just out the line a little bit more and then we'll go and just do that so that's how that will go okay let's do a line like this and kind of get an idea of how things are going 
is to sort of place all the lines as well, just remember that, and it's like kind of the middle point there, and that's where the black is. So that's just a simple idea of how shadow will look for that. So to make shadow look like shadow the hedgehog, I think we need to actually now start on the face. <laughs> I think we've waited long enough, so now that we've uh, got a little bit more of the body and we get an idea of where everything is, what we can do is now start drawing in uh, the muzzle and the mouth. So it goes just a little bit around there, just a little bit below the head bit that I did draw. And then what we'll do is we'll have a little bit where it curves down, you know, curve back up. Now I'll curve back down again so you're making it kind of symmetrical so you, what's on this side will be on the other side as well. So yeah, just curve that around and eventually just meet it up around there, like that. And then what we'll do is what I like to do for the eyebrows when they kind of are around the nose area for, for where like they sort of separate is I like to draw a line across so we get an idea of sort of the positioning of the, the eyebrows and there's a sort of a curve line going up to show like the the bend in the eyebrows and, and the separation as well to show like the, the facial expression. Shadow's got a serious face like I was saying so now we've got that what we'll do is we'll go up now with the line like that and then we'll do it on the other side and then we can then start drawing that line up a little bit more and curving it around. So now we've got that, we'll curve this line up and then we'll curve around and eventually it will meet up around there. And what I will do is I just slightly improve this inside. I'm not too happy uh, with that side. I feel like it's a little bit too, just not, not as what I would want it. So I'm just gonna try and curve that up a little bit more and then well join that bit up a bit but it's, it's a little bit better I'll, I'll improve it a little bit later if I feel I need to and what I'll do actually is just I'll widen it out now that I've improved that other line a little bit there so that's a bit better and now we've got that what we'll do is we'll do pretty much the same on the other side you want to kind of keep the, the size of the eyebrow is kind of similar throughout since I feel like I've gone a little bit too since there's a, if you look at shadows muzzle you should be able to see that there's sort of a gap where there's two lines so you don't want to go too far on the edge of the muscle uh, muzzle so let's go through here and we'll just do a straight diagonal line down and curve it around and then I'll move out any lines that are in the way are a bit scruffy like that and if I haven't said already you can always pause the video guys as well so um, if you need any extra time just to draw things in of course as you can go at whatever pace you want as long as you pause the video <laughs> so you'll have to keep up with me if you don't pause the video of course so <laughs> it, it probably would be recommended that if you want to go at a pace where you take a little bit longer then definitely pause the video at parts you can always rewatch a little bit more just to uh, realize what we're doing here. If I forget to explain a point or anything like that. So now we've got the eyes. What I'd like to do now is draw in the eyeballs, kind of like the pupil bits. So yeah, let's draw those in now. So they're kind of really like oval shapes, but they get cut off, of course. So you're not drawing like a full oval, only like a half oval. So we'll go to there with that. And then on the other side, the same it's round about the middle point and everything I might with the left one I might just shorten it depending on how big this one fits in and then you can just compare them and then think if you need to improve them slightly so you basically get the idea of how the eye is gonna do and how they're gonna shape and uh, how, how they're gonna look basically so yeah it shouldn't be too, too short kind of want them to be as symmetrical as possible because you want kind of a, a good amount of space still in it when you're drawing shadows eyes you want to make sure there's plenty of space to draw in the black part and the white glow and there's still plenty of space for the red in shadows eyes so now what we'll do is we'll add in the red part of shadows eyebrows so this is what will be underneath the eyebrow here for each corner of his eyes 
with Mike Pipe's eyes, so it's, it's going in like that. And then what I'll actually do is just shorten it a little bit there as well. So you don't want it going out too far. Something like that will be okay. And then on the other side, I'll do is the same. So something similar at least it's basically the opposite way around just like that it's like a really curvy triangle and then what we'll do is we'll add in the eyebrows now so starting on the left side we'll do is sort of like the skin park area here and then let's go around it and then a little line up and then you want to go diagonal line and then curve that down and I'd say to about here there like that and then on the other side, what is, this is a little bit more simple this time, so it's just going to be eyebrow curving like that. Very simple there. So guys, yeah, just a little uh, quick adjustment. All I did was just widen out all of about, from putting off about here, so this line, so everything on this side, I, I, I just widened it a little bit, so just moved it outwards a little bit more, so I, I just felt like there was a little, little too uh, small amount of white area space in that eye so I thought you know just move it out a little bit more and it should look a little bit better there so I'm happier with that there it's a lot better so guys now that we've drawn all that what we'll do now is we'll move on to doing the top of Shadow's head so basically around about let's say middle of the top of here around about there we'll draw a line it'll sort of like we're doing sort of like a really big arched curve for Shadow's head Got a big brain <laughs> right now, so uh, what we'll do is we'll go to about there. And eventually, we'll sort that um, side of the line out, but on the other side to where we started the line, uh, we're going to draw now the the ear. So it's quite a big ear as well. So going sort of curving up, it's a really curved triangle as well. And what we'll do is make that line a little bit dark and remove those other lines you can get a better idea there we go and then what we can do is start drawing in the spikes and this side so what we'll do is we'll a little bit of a curve and we'll gradually keep going outwards say to about there that'll be okay and then we'll curve it down and then eventually it will curve in so I say around about here is where you want to start the next spike around the middle point of the muzzle somewhere around there so going in to about there you, you want a little bit of a gap but not too much so the gap will be about that much there and then what we'll do is we'll go all the way to about there and curve this spike in and there will be an arm around here so I might just have to adjust the uh, the end of the spike but should be okay right now before we do that but what we'll do now actually is to draw the arm in since we can adjust uh, the spike as well it makes it a little bit easier so drawing the arm it goes out like that and with a little gap over here and eventually if you were to curve it off like that you'd have a better idea of how things are going we'll just give it a little bit more there just go to about there with it and we'll get rid of any lines in there and that should be a little bit better there for that um, you want to kind of keep it similar thickness to uh, how the right arm is going as well since it's a little bit curved so that's why it looks a little bit thin right now but just improve that there and kind of keep consistency there so now we've got that what we'll do is just adjust this spike now so we'll go about there and we'll curve it and then we can adjust the top spike it basically before what I was doing is giving you an idea of how we're drawing the spikes uh, I, I guess I should have planned it a little bit better by having the arm there so then it would have been a little bit easier and you could start from top to bottom or uh, bottom to top it doesn't really matter how you want to go and do that and so yeah something like that 
I think the top spike stall is actually perfectly fine. It's just depending. All we needed to start out was really just the uh, the bottom spike, since it's not actually that big, since it's getting a little bit covered by the arm and uh, that side of the body. So because of the angle that Shadow is at right now, and then once you've got something like that, what we'll do is start adding in uh, the the red stripes on Shadow's spikes, so like the red markings. The iconic bits that make Shadow different from Sonic. <laughs> right, so there we go with that. So it's just simply just a uh, upside down curve, basically, upside down arch shape there. And then basically racing the other ones as well. So going in like that. Okay, just something like that there. Uh, I probably will uh, eventually go and clean up the lines, but hopefully you guys won't have as me as messy lines as I do. I like to, when drawing things, I like to sort of like flick my lines a little bit <laughs> instead of just doing uh, one line like that and then moving on to the next. <laughs> so that's why <laughs> my drawings could turn out a little bit scruffy, but it's okay. So now that we've got this, what we'll do is we'll draw in the ear, so the side that goes on this side that separates this line so it doesn't keep going this way. Um, we'll go, I'd say, to about here with that, and then go up, and I'm going to go and curve it down. Don't want it to be too small this year, as Shadow is kind of facing forward, so he's got like a big head as well. <laughs> so, if you look at this, I'd say, if you were to look at the end of that, you would curve it, kind of, you know, you'd have a curve that kind of would end up meeting around that point. And what we can actually do, since there is a bit of a curve actually, there's this line here that represents the bottom of Shadow's sort of like the side. So it's like showing sort of like there is an underneath to uh, the spike when we draw it. S uh, since it's at a certain angle. So now that we've got that, what I'll do is draw in the middle spike. So Going with this middle spike, it is just a upside down triangle really. So we'll go like that there. And that's cool. And then on the uh, other side of the ear, we'll start drawing in the spike. So going down outwards and back up. And then we'll go down to thicken the spike and a good idea of where you want the spike when uh, drawing the next one is is kind of the middle point would be uh, sort of the middle of the white part of the eye for where you want to end the first spike and start the next uh, second spike and yeah, you don't really want to go any further than these lines have been uh, drawn to. So that'll be okay. And then what we'll do is we'll go underneath. We'll start curving another line. This will be the top of the second spike on this side. And then we'll curve it. And it's going to be quite a big spike considering that there's uh, I might move it in slightly just because depending on the space that is uh, being left by uh, the red uh, stripe bits um, I might move these in a little bit more because I don't want them to be too out wide and too massive as it make Shadow's head look too big for his body so you don't want that so it's all about the trial and error and seeing what works uh, for when you're drawing things because everything will turn out different every time you draw it. <laughs> I've done test runs of things and when I actually come to do it, it comes out either better or worse. It's just it's just how things go sometimes, but it's all about practice and you'll get better. And Yeah, it's just learning what works for certain drawings and how uh, everything goes. So I'm trying to <laughs> deliver the best I can with this. Uh, I hope you guys are able to follow along. It, it has been a long tutorial so far, but it's just me really going into depth and trying to help you guys out as much as possible to get an understanding of how Shadow uh, would be drawn as Super Shadow. And really to um, have an idea where the spike would end, we would have to then draw in the 
sort of the back uh, uh, of so like the back of this you'd have a spike and a, a tail spike as well so sort of like shoulder spikes really and so it's curve it down and eventually it would I feel like I've gone too long with my line since eventually you know you'd have sort of like the wrist there and that would end off uh, that line just something like that and what I will do is actually I w since it's, it's not that high up uh, far down sorry it's a little bit higher the uh, where the line ends I will just prove that there so we can have it around about let's say let's, let's go for that, that that'll be a bit better for where that ends we can just improve everything here <laughs> and try and make things a lot less scruffy make it look a little bit better so that's all good there the shadow and it's looking a little bit more <laughs> super shadow but of course we will eventually get to coloring this and i'll do it in a time lapse since i don't want to spend too long um coloring in the video so what we'll do also for the for the back on the ear is just always triangles inside of, of a triangle for the ear just point out the end and curve the top and then just go out this side as well for that so now that we've got something like this what we're going to do now is start moving on to the hands since now we haven't actually constructed these so what i'm quickly going to do is show you a quick technique on how you can construct these since I don't want to spend too much of you guys time on this but what we'll do is kind of making a really wonky looking triangle <laughs> it's almost like a, a button that you'd uh, press you know you have a button just press it <laughs> it's like a really bad hand there but uh, just imagine a hand and the finger going out <laughs> it's because it, it, because of time it's taking <laughs> me uh, very very uh, making me do scruffy drawings <laughs> so uh, uh, there you go uh, <laughs> and what I like to do uh, for this is what we'll do also is make sure that part of this is actually at the middle of Shadow's leg as you don't want his hand going too far down as he might end up having a longer hand and arm <laughs> than an, his leg and you don't want that as you don't want his leg going below the uh, the shoe of course <laughs> so you don't want the hand even going below the shoe that that, that wouldn't uh, <laughs> be ideal so now that we've got this what we'll do is we'll simply just sort of add bends to where the knuckle is for uh, and each in each indiv individual finger is for shadow's hand so curving that down and then up and we'll go to here eventually curve that at the end so that's be something like that and then what makes things a little bit easier is if we do the thumb first before we do the top of the fingers as we get an idea of how the thumb will go and where we want it of course so uh, that'll make things a little bit just easier so you don't uh, get things overlapping too much so now we've got that what we'll do is we'll add in the second finger so this is kind of like the middle point where the finger is so you want to kind of make sure that your lines that separate each finger are where they um, th so basically to separate each finger and show that it's connecting with each knuckle you'd have it separate like that wouldn't you and so want to make sure that the lines you, since they're not connecting that they're still kind of level with the knuckles <laughs> it makes things look better that way of course and you don't have a weird looking hand so going with this what we'll do is go back down and then it's a little curve so it kind of curves in and then back out and then what I'll do is shorten that line and what we'll have is a little line going outwards there and then for the uh, pinky finger what we have is it curving inwards like this and just finish it off like that and we can then now so sort of, there we go with the uh, the ring there we can finally uh, <laughs> connect that to the hand of course so now we've got something like this what we'll do is now draw in the second finger so going like that 
better to start over with this way, I guess, since then you have a better idea of where the hand is, of course. Uh, sort of with the finger even, so you're not making it too long. And yeah, when it comes to uh, drawing things, the hand has definitely always been the hardest thing for me. When drawing Sonic characters for some reason, they just always look very, very complex. So trying to uh, break things down when drawing things is a very good way to go around when drawing complex things. It's always breaking down things into simple shapes and not trying to go and do the most complex part of the hand first since that will only lead you with many problems and we don't want that when drawing so <laughs> now we've got that what we'll do now is we'll just now add in the thumb so going around there and what i'll do just get rid of all the lines in there so it's going above that finger that that last finger we drew around here and then what we'll do is just rub that line out rub that line out and then that'll be okay I'll make sure that my view is a little bit better. There we go. Also, a good tip for the um, spike, which I just realized now is that just coming back to re-proportioning it and re-improving it, what I have noticed is that I probably will draw this bottom line again since if you look at the gap between the spike and and you kind of realize where where I went wrong but that's okay if things happen like that sometimes so that's where we're going with that and then what we'll do is we'll improve the red part as well so it makes it look a little bit better how it is and then it makes shadow spike not look too <laughs> too massive also as well so that, that kind of corrects things like I said it's always trial and error even when trying to do tutorials it can be trial and error you know <laughs> the hardest thing can actually try be trying to do things on camera so since it's, it's harder to spend a lot of time on things you know, I like to take my time with drawing things since I don't uh, I, I'm more quality over quantity when it comes to drawing so that's how I like to do things I take pride over my drawings and I want to always deliver the uh, and give you guys the best uh, drawing that I can do as well as the best tutorial the best drawing so that you guys can come out with similar results or even exact results which is always a good thing but of course but if as long as you're getting better then that's uh, <laughs> my goal achieved so yeah that's great so now you've got something like that what we can now move on to is the left side and that's going to be the left arm and hand so there's a little bit of red there, so red stripe and what we'll do is we'll now add in, since this one's a little bit different, I'll just make sure that line's a little bit darker. <laughs> that's, that's me trying to always <laughs> go with, over things too much, <laughs> trying to improve things too much. Uh, but um, with uh, this wrist, have the red part, so it's kind of a really wonky looking square. So it's like a little diagonal line for the top, and then we'll cut in that line there, and then we'll what we'll do is go back to the outside and go with a line downwards and then we can go there with that and then we'll go back inside there's a line diagonal and we'll finish off doing a line down like that and then we can finally draw in the uh, the ring and going in like that so for the really scruffy lines again <laughs> and then Something like that will do. I'll just remove any scruffy lines because I don't want to finish on scruffy lines. <laughs> I want to make my life a little bit easier when it comes to looking at how things are for the uh, end of the drawing. I don't want to spend too long on um, um, basically cleaning up the drawing. So <laughs> I want to make life as easy as possible for you guys and myself. So yeah, that's okay. And what we'll do is just improve that line. Can you get a clear idea of how things are going? So now that we've got that, what we'll do is I'll just make sure that things are fine. But what I like to do now is I'll draw myself like a circle shape. So this will represent uh, the palm. So basically, you'll have everything in here that is a palm. So and it also will make it a little bit easier for the thumbs. That's kind of on that side. So as you can just 
kind of draw a middle point for where the fun is and then we can improve that line a little bit later but now we've got this what we'll do is improve that bottom line so now that we've got it what we'll do is we'll add in the the pinky finger so going down and it's curving out and back in and then going up like that and then what we'll do is we'll be similar on the other side and we'll curve it up to about there and then what we'll do now is since the the thumb now cuts above this line so curve to the line we did that puts things across and then what we'll do is move that so it's not uh, too hard to see so it makes it a little easy to see we'll curve inwards and then curve in like that there so you kind of see the bend in the thumb and then we can go back around and do the other side of the thumb now so it makes it uh, drawing the fingers a little bit easier so the thumb kind of goes to about there and then we'll now curve in the thumb and get rid of any excess lines well I'll curve out the thumb even really it's got a little bit of a curve going outwards and then once we've done that what I'll do now since I've rubbed out the line since I feel like I didn't give myself enough space to curve this line since I felt like I was going to go in the other line but now that I've got myself a little bit of space it does uh, bring out the curve a little bit more and make it even look more like a curve there for the thumb and any lines that cut across will get rid so now that we've done that what we'll do is draw the the finger that's on the outside so what we can do also is go this line and curve it so one thing I do is I really do not <laughs> um, like drawing fingers it's so complex <laughs> but also you know a quick tip if you are trying to draw fingers and I guess uh, this is not the style we're drawing our hand right now but imagine this the um, that is basically the palm and for the thumb what I like to do is kind of draw a triangle and then you connect like a rectangle kind of shape to it and then for the fingers you go with like rectangles and that's an easier way to go about drawing your hand course but um, obviously this one's a little bit more difficult to do that so <laughs> um, you can you can also do a, uh, like a circle for the palm as well it, it works both ways what we'll do is expand that finger a little bit more so we don't want it too thick of a finger so this one's going down we'll curve up and out and then what we'll do is put this Make that finger that we did before a little bit bigger. It's really hard drawing this picture because the reference I'm using has really, really bold outlines. So getting the gap in between fingers can be a little bit difficult. It makes them look either really, really too big or uh, <laughs> uh, it can be really difficult to judge basically. So uh, I'm trying my best. With this, also quickly just to let you guys know that I also did just... Um, just made them a little, little tiny, a little bit smart. It's not like a massive adjustment. It's just to make them not go too far down, as you don't want their hands really going too far down past the, the the shoe, of course. So now that we've got to this, what we'll do next, just before the shoe, since there's something on the body that we need to do also, is the um, shoulder spike. So in this gap, there's a line, and then we have uh, the tail spike. So that kind of goes down like that and then curves back up and then you got a line a small line in there and then it's the middle of this part here would have the other shoulder spike there as well line so something inside those uh, that gap there so now going back to uh, shadow and his uh, shoes what we're gonna do is now just basically add in the details that we weren't doing before so what we do for the shoe on this side is just improve 
this line by going out and then it will curve and then it will sort of have a curved inline like that and just imagine it kind of going like that really and that's how the shape kind of looks mine's a little bit hard to tell because it's squishy once again I do apologize for that just trying to be as quick as possible because I know if I uh, don't do quickly <laughs> I'll be here forever so I, d I don't want to be here forever of course and you guys don't want to be here drawing the same thing forever of course and then let's just curve that bit there so it's a little bit more of a curve around that uh, point in that corner and then going to this what we can do now is this uh, red part goes a little bit more outwards to um, compared to the uh, black part so you don't want the black line connecting to the curve you want it to be basically like this a bit more outwards like that <laughs> that there simply and now that we've got that what we'll do is uh, the shoes basically will properly start now adding in the details so what I like to start off with is the solve the shoes since that will make things a little bit easier of course so you'll have an idea to shadow a little bit more better then and so going down all the way to here and then like kind of a rectangle shape over here and then we'll go up another rectangle shape and then what I'll do is th this uh, bit of the sole of the shoe like the edges does go a little bit further than the line we drew so what we can do now the lines a little bit separate is give the line a bit of a curve to it there so it just makes it look a little bit better and nicer and we can also go with the bottom line it's like another rectangle it's got a little bit of a curve on the end so the, the point is going out a little bit more instead of being straight and then what we'll do is we'll go down and on the other side to make this a little bit easier to know how far to go down you can do a line across and then this will represent sort of like the 3d part of shadow shoe the front of it since we're drawing the sides now we're drawing the front and go down like this you kind of imagine kind of like a, a line going across like that so yeah, that's what we'll do so that's to shorten that side and then do is you know, darken that line so once you've got something like that what we'll do is add in the ring the, the shoe so going in and curving just a curve like that and we can then connect it and then what we'll do is the inside of the ring so just another circle there and it has sort of like a 3d aspect so it's showing like the inside of the bottom of it so imagine this being the inside of a ring and it'd have something like that so that bit in there so. <laughs> yeah uh, let's get rid of that there we go and then sorted and then what I'll do is get rid of all these excess lines we don't need anymore and then we'll redraw that line in there okay so now that we've done that what we'll do is now what just to get rid of that line so it makes it a little bit easier we're basically going to do the separation point from the white and the black so going like that you'll curve it so we've got a little bit of a curve there to separate it and then you would go with a line there and from here all the way down we'll go in there with the shoe and now we've got that we'll start adding in the red part of the sole and everything of this shoe and so going here and it curves it's just a little bit showing you know what to make this a little easier I'll just get rid of um, all the lines in between there so going from here as well just to make it a little bit simple to see and connecting the line and then going down with a line here you want to make sure that it's not going below this lines that we did for the, the shoe remember that 
and then so we've got that and then it will just go into this shoe there so that'll be shadows left shoe pretty much done you can also shade that in if you want right now as well feel free to do that now that we've got that we'll now start drawing in the right shoe so this is a kind of like a sort of front angle it's very similar to the angle that shadows at uh, it's, it's not perfectly front, but it's, it's sort of like facing, I, I guess the best way to say it is a slight angle, instead of being front like that, it's like that. So you want to keep that in mind when drawing that, to make sure it keeps facing at a certain angle of everything. So this is the black part at the top, and we go and into the, the shoe round about there, and we can just colour in all of that. And then what we'll do is we'll get rid of all these lines over here so they don't conflict. And go in with this curves. And then going back up to the top, we'll go with this line across. And then we'll go down here on this side to separate everything and then that's the bottom of that bit the shoot and it would eventually go to about there with that now what we'll do on the other side of course go back to the top and eventually this will curve round and connect to the black part we had so now that you've got that what we'll do is we'll go so this is a little bit of a complex uh, shape to do, but I'll try and explain it and make it a bit easier to separate this bit from the uh, second part of the shoe. So basically we had, uh, with this, you see that two soles, is that there is it's separate. So that, that line that we did before here is separating things. So uh, now that we've got that separation, what we do is start adding in uh, sort of the the split so like the, the 3d front part of it so imagine like this being the front of this area be facing forward and then once we got that gonna curve it we're gonna go up like that and then what I'll do is get rid of this line that's in the middle there and we can go in and side is like that there pretty cool so solid like that and that'll be fine so now that we've got that what we'll do is go the line so it eventually curves you want to make sure it doesn't go too far below the bottom of the line that we drew just so going in like that so now we've got that what we'll do is start drawing in the top of uh, the shoe uh, get rid of all these excess lines. There's a lot of excess lines. It's going around like that, and then down. And we can separate it like this. And on the top, we can do that as well. So now that we've got that, what we'll do is go back to the other side and go with a line up. We'll basically, do the front of this and line across I'm gonna go down and then we'll connect it to the lines that we had before and then just get rid of everything in the middle so basically now we're gonna be drawing in the ring as well just going with the ring like that and then on the inside the ring as well Probably requires a bit of a zoom actually in so you can see things a little bit better. I can rub out a little bit of gaps as well. Make it a little bit easier to draw. There we go, and there is a little bit of a uh, sort of like the inside of the shoe, so it's showing uh, the ring that has a little bit of a inside of it, so like the side is sort of showing it's like it is 3D. So, yeah. We get that and I've got that I'm happier with this so far and then we just do a line across 
on both sides and then eventually it'll go up. So once you have something like this, what we'll do next is it has a little bit of a kind of say this is what uh, the power thing that happens when he's hovering so it's kind of like it's like a little bit of I guess the, the power I, I don't really know what you call uh, this but it's it's kind of when it's, you know when you're flying and let's say you got a jetpack and whatever's come out of the jetpack it's like what's coming out of the, the bottom of the shoe so sort of like some kind of energy <laughs> kind of thing there so that is for this so now we've got something all like this we're very very nearly done so all we need now to focus on and do is just this bottom part of the shoe so basically the inside so what we'll do is basically what we did on the outside but on the inside and then we'll move on to the mouth and uh, the nose and the eyes and that'll be everything done I believe uh, <laughs> finally got there this one is a little bit tricky but um, I'm basically happy with how it's looking right now and I can't wait to clean this up shade it and then color it in so getting rid of everything inside the nozzle I just don't want things getting in the way that's the last thing I want and so with the nose it's gonna go and cut above the lines so it's gonna go up and touch the left eyebrow and then it's gonna go and curve it round and back down and then you have it like that there and then what we'll do is remove all that lines there and you have a clear nose clean circle and what we'll do since uh, for me I prefer to add in the white circle after I've colored things in when, when doing it digitally it's probably better for you on paper to draw the circle in since then you'll get an actual white circle but it's a lot easier on digital ta uh, tablets to color things in then draw the white circles and then you're gonna get the uh, shape that you want a little bit better and it's gonna be a lot easier of course so you've got something like that for the nose that's okay so now that we've got that we'll draw it in the mouth so the mouth to start off with is simply just a it's kind of like a pointy arrow facing left go down a little bit more with that side as well and then it's got a little bit of a frown so it's going up a little bit and then it's going to go all the way down I'm going to improve that line so I felt like I went too long with that one and then I'm going to thicken that line darken it a little bit more there and you can see kind of the frown is going for there you can always put it into perspective to see if you uh, like it and what I will quickly do is probably just improve the line but you basically get the idea of what it's doing so I'm just completely going to just improve it I think I'm happy with that, I'm fine. And I realized just before um, I, I thought we we're going to be finishing with the eyes, I realized we do need to do the body fur as well. So I won't forget about doing that either. <laughs> so now that we've got everything like this, what we'll do now is draw in the black part of the eye. And like I said with the nose, what I like to do is draw and color in the black bit first before I go around coloring it and, and doing the, the glow. And drawing in the glow really is instead of coloring yeah you won't you don't really color in color in a white glow do you so then uh something like that and then so white glow let's go slightly out the eye so we'll do a little outline for that side but this side it does stay in what i'll do i think it's a little bit too big on that side so just make it a little bit smaller it depends on the uh, eraser size that you have on right now. Uh, I won't bother trying to change it just for this moment. <laughs> and yeah, just just something like that. And you can always go and zoom it out as well just to see if you're happy with it. And I'll do just a circle off this edge a little bit better. Improve everything inside. Make it look nicer. Then we'll go up and then you can have a look and see how it looks see if you're happy with it and now finally the last thing <laughs> we get there after hour of recording who believe that I thought it only take me about half an hour just to do this part <laughs> or less I was hoping but um, uh, what we'll do now is we'll basically go and do pointy triangles so there we'll start off with and then we'll go across this side and we'll go back down and then what I'll do is I'll uh, 
we're about a few parts of these, but uh, I'll come back to others eventually. We're about inside, but some uh, we can rub out a little bit before that. So uh, that's that side done. And curve it there. And then on the other side, what we'll do is we'll go up this way and then kind of see it's going out a bit more. And it's probably easy. You, you can do what you prefer. You can go from bottom to top or top to bottom. But what I will do is just separate the middle point of this. Uh, so that makes it a little bit easier for me just to know everything. And there is a little bit of the top of Shadow's body that is showing over this side. So keep that in mind. So going up with this spike goes above everything and then back down. And then what we'll do is we'll add in the next one. And it's quite big this one, so it does cut into things quite a lot. And uh, goes back down to about there. So it's the line is slightly sticking out. And then we'll draw in the next one. You want to kind of keep things similar. You want to kind of make sure that uh, where you're starting and finishing your side, it make it look symmetrical basically. Try and make sure that um, every spike looks like it's in the exact same position. If you were to mirror it or to um, flip it, it looks the same. So, going with this, this one down all the way to here, and then the final one will go out like that there. So like I said, we'll now get rid of everything inside of it and clean it up and make it look a lot better. I'll be cleaning up my drawing off camera and I will be shading it off camera and then you guys will be able to see the results since uh, I'm going to, instead of showing a time lapse of a shade, I'm going to show a time lapse of colouring since I think that will be uh, a lot better, I think. Since you, you guys can choose whether you want to shade or clear yours. Since I'll show you uh, the both results of uh, either one you choose. I'm really happy with how things are looking. They're looking a lot better and yeah, it looks brilliant. <laughs> I believe I haven't forgotten everything. And as saying that, I, I just realized I did. There's a, there's a red stripe. I thought there was only one red stripe on uh, Shadow's arms, but apparently there's two. Uh, there we go. <laughs> now, definitely things should be done. <laughs> Everything should be sorted. All good. Yeah, um, looking at the drawing, looking at the reference, I think everything looks fine. I think I'm really happy with it. So all that's left for me now just to do is just rub a few of the uh, excess lines out, clean this drawing up, shade it, and then I'll do a version of uh, colouring it on time lapse. And hopefully uh, it should come out something like uh, this one. So <laughs> as it's the reference I've been using, so I hope you guys... Uh, have a, a good shot of the hedgehog this one's taken a long time it has been lengthy but it's been worth it so if you guys do uh, get this far <laughs> then be sure to tell me in the comments and that'd be great and i, I very much appreciate you guys uh sticking uh, to the video this far in so guys once you've cleaned up your super shadow the hedgehog and you've even decided to go and shade it like me you should have something like this and you can pause the video and copy the way i've shaded my shadow the hedgehog if you'd like to do it the same and if you're not wanting to shade shadow the hedgehog then there's no need to worry as i will be doing a color time lapse using line art so i'm gonna i basically drew another shadow and basically the exact same since i went over it with line art kind of pen tool and that's how i'm going to color in the time lapse using what will be uh, this one so take the other ones away we've got this so i'm gonna color in this shell the hedgehog and you can follow along in the color time lapse and it shouldn't be too hard to follow as you can slow down the video as youtube has speed settings in the video settings for you'll usually find it around the uh, quality of the video settings so it shouldn't be too hard to find if you need to slow the video down you can always pause the video to catch up if you need to that's perfectly fine and also, if you've got this far in the video, you can put down in the comment section how your Shad the Hedgehog is going and what you think about this drawing and just a bit of feedback or just uh, asking for any tips on how to improve. And yeah, I'll reply to all the comments as best I can. So without further ado, let's start the Super Shadow Colour Time Lapse. <laughs>
So there we go guys, this is Super Shad the Hedgehog once you have coloured your drawing in. Hopefully you're able to follow the time lapse accurately and there's always, like I say, there's uh, video settings in YouTube that allow you to speed up and slow down videos. It'll be right by the video quality so you should be able to find it quite easily if you need to make this video go at your own pace but I think this has gone on for long enough this video <laughs> it's taken me a while this drawing it has a lot more detail than I was actually expecting it to really be and <laughs> took me a lot longer than expected but I'm really really happy with the results and this has to be one of my best super shadow drawings and I'm really really happy with it and hope you guys really like the drawing as well you can leave down in the comments if you got this far what you think about the drawing and you can also tell me how your super shadow has turned out as well and that would be great to hear and see how you guys have drawn your super shadow or if any tips that you've learnt from this drawing since you might be doing a different super shadow and may need a bit of a tip or two from this video and I hope I was able to help you with that. So yeah I hope you guys did enjoy this super shadow step by step tutorial in depth guide where I go really into detail on how to draw Super Shadow. So yeah, if you did, be sure to hit that like button. That'd be very much appreciated to show your support on the video and to show me that you guys like these type of drawing tutorial videos. And if you're new around here and you'd like to see more drawing tutorials from me or Minecraft Bedrock Survival World series or even Minecraft Dungeons right now, then be sure to hit that subscribe button to join this awesome growing community. We've hit over 1,200 subscribers, so Get into that 1,300 subscriber goal would be great. So you guys hitting that subscribe button would be very, very much appreciated. Especially since the number of uh, you guys watching the videos that are subscribed and not subscribed is a bit too... <laughs> I don't really like the ratio. So narrowing that ratio down to more people watching that subscribe would be awesome. So yeah, once again, hope you guys did enjoy this video. Hope you have a great rest of your day, week, wherever you guys are from. Stay safe in this troubling time in the world. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!